Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Well, underdog Rishlin Provotnikov delivered, right? More importantly, for our purposes, since my pre-fight post said, play this as Provotnikov by KO and Alvarado by KO, right? More importantly for us, Provotnikov delivered by KO, right? So gamblers should be very happy on this one. Understand though, you should never take winning for granted just like we won on this fight, there'll be fights, there have been fights, where we won't be as lucky. Always remember, gambling involves significant risk. You could lose it all. But let's get back to this fight. Let's talk about the styles of the fighters and what Alvarado could have done differently. In my opinion, what separates great fighters from very good fighters are just a few adjustments, right? Just a little bit more understanding of the sport. The small things are actually the big things. I believe you saw that in this fight. Now let's talk about it. Provodnikov is a mid-range hooker. Power shots with both hands. Likes to throw both hands. What that means is he's gonna come in square. Right? He's not coming in at a side profile. He's coming in pretty square. Think Powell Wolak. Right? So he's coming in more or less square. Right? He has, and this is one of the factors in the fight, above average foot speed. Don't just view him as a slugger. View him as a slugger on the move. Right? He's very front foot heavy. In other words, he's the hunter, not the hunted. But he's clever with it. He doesn't just dive in. Rather, what he does is he comes up to you and he hesitates. He stays far enough from you so that it's hard to clinch him. He also has his hands up. So again, his hands create a little bit of a dynamic. They increase the spacing between the two of you, they make it harder to lean forward. You have to get by his hands to clinch him. He's also playing a little bit of a distance game, right? <clears throat> you know eventually he's going to be right in front of you throwing hooks. You know that, right? But he keeps you guessing as to exactly when that is. He's playing also a spacing game. In this fight, as I mentioned in the pre-fight video, he was the guy who was always in the middle of the ring. Right? Take a look at the highlights. He has Alvarado up against the ropes. He has Alvarado on the outside. This is a hallmark of Freddie Roach fighters. Right? Freddie Roach not only focuses on hand-to-hand -hand combat, he has his guys stay away from the corner of the ring. This is very different <coughs> than, let's say, the fighting style of a Broner, a Mayweather, or a Hopkins. Right, now let's talk about Alvarado. Alvarado is a tall KO puncher. Now keep in mind, since Alvarado is 5'9", and is fighting at 140 pounds and had a problem making weight. That should tell you that Alvarado is not going to be able to take body shots well. He's too tall and slender for the weight. And his body isn't naturally so. In other words, he's having a problem making weight. Right? Now, Alvarado himself had a big knockout ratio. So he's accustomed to being the hunter and not the hunted, right? It's Alvarado who normally has the other fighter covering up. What that should tell you is that Alvarado's ability to, hit, to fight on his back foot 
might not be that great. Alvarado does have above average boxing skills, no doubt about that. You saw that in the third round when Alvarado literally is switching between different styles. Alvarado can even fight left-handed, but he believes much more in his punch than he does his fighting ability. At the end of the day, Alvarado is trying to take you out. Now, I know many people here <coughs> online, forgive me, I'm nursing a terrible cold. Many people here online said, Dwyer, your hedge is off. It should be Provodnikov by KO hedged with Alvarado by decision, right? Fair enough. But understand, Alvarado himself is not a guy who is aiming for a decision, right? I know he got one in the Rios rematch, but Alvarado really thinks of himself as a knockout puncher. You could tell that just by how this fight unfolded, right? Let's talk about what Alvarado could have done or should have done to give himself more of an opportunity. These are the things he would have had to have done to have gone the distance. These are things, in my opinion, he didn't do. Now, I'm going to disagree out the gate. Now, I'm just a layman sitting in front of a laptop. I'm going to disagree out the gate with Alvarado's own corner, with Alvarado's trainer who in a post-fight interview said that Alvarado just needed to let his hands go more to win the fight. I'm going to disagree. I think what Alvarado needed was less power and more boxing. Right? The sport, after all, is called boxing. Let's talk about what he should have done that he didn't do. The first thing is he needed to slow the action down. Right? Not speed it up with higher volume. He needed to slow the action down. Now here, let's talk about an angles game. It's going to sound esoteric. I'm just here to tell you this is the game that Broner, Mayweather, Hopkins, and Vladimir Klitschko use. Right? You're fighting a mid-range hooker who's coming in like this. Right? Provodnikov, many times in this fight, is square. He's literally facing Alvarado. <coughs> what you need to do at that point is you need to come in at a side profile and have him run into your shoulder. The fight I want you to think about is Brandon Rios against Richard Abril. Right? You need to have this guy run into your shoulder. Alvarado does early. I believe it's something like the third round. He literally stops moving. And he has Provodnikov run into his shoulder. But then he abandons that strategy. He's not a master at pacing. In my opinion, that should have been his strategy. Understand, when you have a square guy, a mid-range hooker coming in like this, run into your shoulder. That takes away 50% of his game. He cannot legally hit you in the back. Right? One of his hands is done. Right? He's going to have to readjust. He's going to have to change the angle. And as he does, you just keep moving that shoulder so that as he adjusts, you adjust. The point is, you're taking away 50% of his game, right? And you're doing so <coughs> without a clinch, right? Take a look at Abril again against Rios. He has Rios running into his shoulder, and Abril just stands his ground, right? It literally throws off Rios's game. The foot speed goes out the window because there's nothing to hunt down. You're right in front of him, right? The side profile is foundational. 
Alvarado should have been playing an angles game, right? Even if the crowd booed a bit, he should have slowed down the fight because think about the alternative. If you're in against a mid-range hooker and you're trying to move on the outside and keep that hooker on the end of a jab, you're going to be expending a lot of energy. It's a 12-round fight. It's also a very bad visual for the judges. One guy chasing the other guy as the other guy runs away. If you're in the middle of the ring and you can set up shop, <coughs> you know Provodnikov's going to be square. And you have him running into your shoulder and you're slick with it where you also have a guard up. Look at Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner... Tony DeMarco. You also have a guard up and you have your head protected. That's devastating. It's going to make the mid-range hooker look unsuccessful because he's the one pushing the action unsuccessfully. Right? Let's talk about clinching as well. Now on HBO they show a great, you know, diagram at the end of fights. You see mannequins and then they'll highlight where the punches landed, right? That's only part of the sport of boxing. Another big part is the ability to clinch. Keep in mind, clinching slows down the action, right? Clinching takes the fight out of the other guy. Understand, clinching is so dominant that it's impossible to discuss a fight like the recent heavyweight fight, Vladimir Klitschko against Alexander Povetkin, without talking about clinching. Now, the point is this. You're fighting Povotnikov. He's shorter than you are. There's a height dynamic here. He's slick. He's well-trained. He has his hands up. So if you're going to clinch him, you're going to have to get through this, right? He's not foolish enough to just stand there like this, like unfortunately Alexander Povetkin did many times in that Klitschko fight. No, this guy's a little bit more advanced. He has his hands up. <coughs> you have to go through a minefield to clinch him. What the Masters do, what Bernard Hopkins does, what Ali used to do, is they would hit you with a big punch. If they were fortunate enough to land a big punch, and if you were momentarily stunned, that's when they move in and clinch. Right? Understand, those men, Hopkins and Ali, they understood that they didn't have the punching power to knock you out with one big punch. So when they land a big punch, they weren't going to try to expand on it by opening up the vault and laying everything they have on the line. Rather, they understand it's a 12-round fight. The odds of knocking out a young lion early are slim, right? Neither guy had the punching power of a Mike Tyson. Now understand, unfortunately for Alvarado... He thought he did. He lands uppercuts on Provotnikov, several in the fight. What he should have done is parlayed the uppercut into a clinch. In other words, what you want to do is slow the fight down. You're fighting a powerful mid-range hooker. The clinch not only breaks that mid-range hooker's rhythm, but the clinch gives you the older fighter, and Alvarado was 33 here. It gives you, the older fighter, an opportunity to rest, to pace yourself. And it also gives you an opportunity to show the judges that you're in control of the fight. Alvarado needed to figure out what Vladimir Klitschko figured out. <laughs> that when a young lion is trying to charge you for 12 rounds, you need to break the action. 
Alvarado, in training for the fight, should have been figuring out how to clinch after he threw the uppercut. How to clinch when the guy's on his shoulder. Right? The problem, though, is Alvarado, with a greater than 60% knockout ratio going into the fight, was a hunter. He didn't have the skills of the hunted. Right? He didn't have the skills that a guy like Ali, who was up on the ropes against George Foreman, had. He didn't have the skills that a guy like Hopkins, who was in against one of boxing's biggest punchers, Jean Pascal, underrated puncher, had. Right? Even in his hometown, where the crowd's on his side, and you'd have to figure that if the fight went to a decision, some of the judges might be impacted by the crowd and by the sentiment in the arena. Even in that environment, Mike Alvarado's interpretation of what he had to do was to take out Richland Provotnikov. He didn't clinch. He didn't slow down the fight. In my opinion, he wasn't there for a decision. He didn't work to drag this out. <coughs> what you had was a younger guy, shorter guy, in there trying to take his head off. And you had Alvarado showing some boxing skills, but then firing back. He should have tried to literally pace himself. Now let's get controversial. What I'm going to say next is strongly disagreed with by many in the sport. In my opinion, he should have even considered because pacing and stamina are so important he should have considered giving away rounds understand that when Bernard Hopkins fights a fight more times than not Bernard Hopkins loses the first if not the first and second rounds Right? Sometimes Hopkins gives away so many rounds at the start of a fight, think both Jermaine Taylor fights, that it costs him on the scorecard. But when you're an older fighter, pacing is crucial. You know Provodnikov is a ball of energy. You know he has the foot speed to track you down. You know he's one of the hardest punchers in the sport. You know he has an excellent chin. You know he's a warrior. Against this kind of fighter, <coughs> what your goal should be, in my opinion, is to stay upright and win 7 of the 12 rounds. So, if you're in there and Provotnikov lands a few bombs early in a round and you realize that you're going to lose that round 10-9, in my opinion, rather than spend your limited energy trying to win that round if it's early in a fight you should say okay I'm gonna stay upright I'm gonna make sure this rounds 10-9 not 10-8 he got this round let me conserve my energy you know when a guy's conserving his energy think Ali Foreman Ali's up on the side of the ropes with his hands up right you need those rest rounds. Boxing's a young man's sport. When you're in your 30s, you need to pace yourself, right? Especially when you're fighting in your hometown and the judging might be in your favor to begin with. I didn't see Alvarado do that. He's more of a fighter than a boxer. He got hit. He tried to hit back. <coughs> he tried to open up on a mid-range hooker. He didn't come in with a side profile all the time. He came in ready to duke it out with Ruslan Provotnikov. Isn't that the same mistake that Timothy Bradley made with this very fighter? Isn't that a recipe for disaster? Don't you have to be slicker than this? against this kind of fighter. 
Let me just say, too, that slick fighters know. Ray Leonard knew this. You're fighting in front of your hometown fans. Give them something. This is an opportunity to steal rounds. If you're two minutes and 45 seconds into a close round, why not let your hands go the last 15 seconds of the round? In fact, that should be part of your strategy. You know you have more fans in the crowd than he does. Bravodnikov's from Siberia. He's fighting in Alvarado's Colorado. Right? Alvarado should have incorporated more showmanship into his game. Play to the crowd. Not for the first two minutes and 45 seconds. <coughs> <clears throat> but for the last 15 seconds. No, I'm not saying he should have a clock innately in his head. But isn't this what you pay guys in the corner for? Right? Guys in the corner should have been yelling, 15 seconds. In fact, they actually hit something in the last 10 seconds of a round. Looking at how Alvarado fought this fight, you wouldn't even have known this fight was in Alvarado's backyard. Right? Alvarado, in my opinion, didn't incorporate the showmanship necessary to steal rounds. Let me just summarize it by looking at it a different way. There's a big time puncher, big time knockout fighter, Tony DeMarco. Right? Tony's one of my favorite fighters. This is a guy who always comes ready to fight. He can be losing a fight, like he was losing to Jorge Linares. And Tony's one of those guys who has the heart of a lion. He's still trying to win the fight. <coughs> Even when he can't win it on his scorecards. In a brawl, I'd pick Tony over Adrian Broner. Tony is more of a fighter. Just straight up street fighter than Adrian Broner. But again, this is boxing. When the two guys fought, the fight wasn't close. You saw Broner in all of his glory. Right now, Broner, as many people know here, I'm a skeptic on his foot speed. But Tony, being a fighter, came to Broner. Big mistake. Right? Broner, side profile, covered his chin, had a tilt. Had Tony running into his shoulder. Half of Tony's game was gone because Broner has a side profile and Tony can't hit him in the back with one punch. Right? Broner's pacing himself. Goes through stretches of rounds where he hardly throws any punches. Right? Broner lands a few crisp punches every round. Slowly deconstructs DeMarco. Ends up stopping him. Now understand, Adrian Broner has no doubt in his boxing ability. <coughs> Whatever was said before the fight, and even though Broner has above average power, Broner is not going to be lulled into a street fight. Broner is going to fight a disciplined fight where his boxing skills are going to take over. Vladimir Klitschko. Huge puncher. Huge puncher. But he wasn't going to get lulled, even in Moscow, even in Prevetkin's backyard, into a shootout when he knew that when Prevetkin jumped inside, he could tie him up. Right? Even a guy with a big punch understood he had to trust his boxing skills to win the fight. And that his boxing skills in the face of booze from the crowd, were dictating the pacing of the fight. In my opinion, that belief in his boxing skills is what hurt Mike Alvarado. Understand there is a school of boxing. We'll call it the Azuma Nelson School. <coughs> that says... But you want to fight a guy in his backyard. Because that guy 
is going to feel a pressure to open up that you, the visitor, is not going to feel. I believe Mike Alvarado wanted to give his fans a shootout. And what that did is that played in Ruslan Provotnikov's game plan. And of course it ended in Provotnikov by stoppage. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.